The 2024 hiring cycle nearing completions. What are the best and worst hirings in this 2024 coaching cycle? And how about Reed versus Shanahan? A look at these head coaches going into Super Bowl 58. All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks to everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Love all the everydayers out there. Get subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. All right. Uh, we're going to dip into the overflow mailbag. There's really good questions here and yeah, some pushback on some of the things we've talked about this week. And uh, I think an important conversation about legacy when it comes to Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan, a conversation I want to continue before we go a little bit deeper into the Super Bowl, make our official Super Bowl 58 picks and look at some prop bets to end the week on Friday show tomorrow. Make sure you tune in to that one. But uh, let's start with the question uh, about the best and worst coaching hires. We're nearly finished with the coaching stuff. We know the head coaches. We're seeing most of the coordinators now more on, on the latest on that in a second. But um, since we've seen most of this happen and we're, and we're almost done here, Scott wanted to know uh, which coaching hires, Matt, do you like the most and the least so far in 2024? I'm a big believer in culture. I mean, that's just the kind of the Steeler roots in me and stability and all these type of things. And I, I think Harbaugh brings a lot of culture. I don't know that he'll bring stability for decades. You know, he gets he kinds to wear on people. But I do think the Chargers, who have pretty historically underachieved despite having great quarterbacks, but basically for my lifetime could use a Harbaugh like influence. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about his coordinators at some point today, but I'm pretty high on that hiring, but I think Raheem Morris is my favorite. I, I think he's a great example of in over his head many moons ago as the head guy and did a bunch of very impressive things since then and is now ready for a much better stint. So those would be my two favorites. We can talk least favorites after that. Do you have a favorite? I, you you kind of took mine. I was going to go Ricky okay. Morris. The more I look at this, and and I'm sitting here watching what's going on with the, the Washington Commanders, and there's a big question that's coming up here uh, yeah, on this yeah. podcast about Cliff Kingsbury, and, and if he's the right guy to develop this quarterback, they might take a number two overall in the draft. Um, Zach Robinson coming with Raheem Morris as the offensive coordinator from Los Angeles. Uh, and, and I think it's a good organization that, you know, that McVay Shanahan tree, uh, that's going to come up as well later in our Reed versus Shanahan conversation. Um, I, I just think it's the right time for Morris in a yeah. good situation with a, a roster that's close. And I, I could see this going really well. Now, clearly you still have to figure out something that's, that's huge, which is quarterback, which is why, to me, I think if you want the most instant gratification success, I think the Chargers, who already have the quarterback, and they bring in Harbaugh, and it might blow up in five years because he burns hot, but burning hot means you're going to win sooner rather than later. Uh, yeah, and yeah. So I love the Chargers higher right now. Um, we all want to talk about that offensive coordinator next, though. Uh, but I love the Raheem Morris because he was the, the young superstar, which is what everyone's looking for, and he's been that. And then now he's like the grizzled veteran, but he's still young, but he's seen time on the offensive side of the ball. He's been around great offensive coaches. He's been around old Shanahan, young Shanahan, Sean McVay, all of those tree coaches that come from there, a ton of great defensive coaches. He's a defensive minded coach and he coordinated a really good defense with as little, you get one star and you get almost nothing else. Right. And, and mm -hmm. the, what he did with Los Angeles there as the defense coordinator, everybody raves about him. That's been around him hearing Les Snead talk about him and McVay and Shanahan and all these coaches that have coached with him. Uh, I think this could be a home run hire for the Atlanta Falcons. So I like that one a lot. Those are, those are my two favorites 
right now. I do think that Seattle sneaking in and getting Mike McDonald late in the process, it, it just really, when you see how the Seahawks and the commanders waited, and then it was like, oh, cool, Seattle, we got our first choice. And the commanders are like, oh, man, wait a second. We actually, our second choice would have been Raheem Morris anyway, but we waited because we wanted our first choice, and we didn't get our first choice now. And, you know, so I, that's why my least favorite hire is probably Dan Quinn, although it's probably unfair to Dan Quinn because I think he's a good coach and things could go well there. But, you know, Cliff Kingsbury comes in as the offensive coordinator. Uh, I, I've got some big questions, and I think they were a little bit, um, and you can blame Ben Johnson if you want, because I think they thought they were going to get him and wanted him. I think that's very clear now. Uh, it's never a good sign when you have a first-time GM and all of a sudden you don't even get the your first and who knows if they got their second choice for a head coach to start over a new program there in Washington. Yeah, I have some concerns as well with, with Quinn. And I also think, and this applies to Harbaugh, I mean, coordinator hires in Vegas, Chargers, Washington are a little questionable, a little concerning to me. I mean, so that's was basically your not 100% your decision, but was one of your first major inputs with the team. You get the job. Okay, let's go to a good coordinator. And I don't know if they pass those tests in Washington, Vegas, and the Chargers particularly mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, my least I was, favorite, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, the with the, the Raiders, I, I would kind of put that with Gerard Mayo. And the yeah. Patriots too. It's like they know their guy, and I could see how it could go well. I just I don't I don't know what I have to go on there, and I don't know what they're going to bring from an X's and O's standpoint. I just thought the Patriots needed more of a shakeup than what they got. They kind of mm -hmm. it's like okay, well you 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 lost the best defensive coordinator in the history of football. And you got a protege of his, but probably not as likely to be as good on defense. But what did you do to change the offense? And what about the organizational front office stuff that didn't go well recently, which is what needed the biggest shakeup? So almost too much of the same, I think, for me with the Patriots. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, too. And obviously, they've had great success over decades. But still, do we want, you know... Uh, mini me bill. I mean, I don't think that's what you're after. And I'm not saying he will be hundred percent, but they're going to keep a lot of the same stuff in place. Tennessee worries me to no end though. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, when their ownership came out, it worried me. They're saying things like, we know we have our franchise quarterback in Tennessee. I'm like, you know that already, you know, and you got a second year GM. I mean, like, I wonder if this group's in a little over their head and, that applies to Callahan, too. I mean, my favorite thing about the Brian Callahan hiring is they got his dad. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know my affinity for great line coaches. That's the best thing they added in really the last year or two is a great line coach. But, I mean, Callahan's resume to me is probably the weakest of any of the new hires. And maybe as concerning is he's never called plays. So... It's a big enough task to learn how to be a play caller, let alone learning how to be a head coach at the same time. And we've seen coaches be able to pull that off. And, you know, mm -hmm. Mike McDaniel's doing a good job in Miami and, and he was that. And yeah. so you're betting on the person and it, it's, it's, it's hard to lot. get, it's hard to get that play caller job. You could be the next great play caller, but you're not going to wrestle that from the head coach who's an offensive minded guy who wants to call plays. And so you have to go somewhere else to do it. So there is a, mm -hmm. a big, a big leap of faith there. And so I will say for the commander's job and Dan Quinn, he's head coached a, a team to a super bowl before, like, you yeah. know, you're going to get a professional coach from Dan yeah. Quinn. Some of these other first timers, th there's a lot more faith involved. So for that reason, uh, I, I, I guess, it's not it fair to say the commander's hire was the worst necessary. I don't know about the cliff thing, but the it's hard to say that getting someone who you know is a professional head coach in the job, you, it's hard to say that's a bad hire versus some of these that are mm -hmm. maybe a lot more uh, dependent on just faith based hires. Where he's a smart young guy, but you know, let's see, first time. I don't know. So I, I get where you're going with that, and I, I don't disagree. Yeah, and it is hard to comment on the McDonald's and Mayo's and all these guys that are have good resumes and they deserve a job. Yeah, We just don't know it yet, of course. And, hey, just because you scheme up fantastic defenses for the Ravens doesn't mean that you can lead a Seahawks organization either. Well put. Uh, next, two 
specific offensive coordinators we've got to cover. One, Greg Roman officially to the Chargers under Harbaugh. His old offensive coordinator from the past is going to be his offensive coordinator once again. What Greg Roman is famous for offensively, though, doesn't jive with Justin Herbert. So does this make sense as the OC for Justin Herbert going forward? And what about Cliff, the quarterback developer? Mm -hmm. Is that a lost cause? Looking at Cliff's history with quarterbacks, and he's been he's had a lot of great ones. But is that a good thing or a bad thing for the Washington Commanders? Next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Nissan and the new line of Nissan Rogue Pathfinder Armada. The 2024 Nissan Rogue, the perfect for city drives and great escapes. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Uh, ever uh, wonder what adventure could be around the corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs that with the capabilities uh, to take your adventure to the next level. How about that Nissan Rogue? Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. And how about the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder? Has room for up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability. We're talking 284 horsepower with up to 6,000 pounds towing. When Adventure Calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the new 2024 Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. So Greg Roman. The old offensive coordinator from the San Francisco 49ers under Jim Harbaugh. He was also uh, the offensive coordinator when Pat, when um, the, uh, Lamar Jackson won an MVP award with the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens decided oh, they wanted to, that got a little stagnant. They wanted to go a different direction. They fired Greg Roman, got a new offensive coordinator there, and looks like Lamar's going to have another MVP uh, there for the, for, the, uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. But Greg Roman, you know, Colin Kaepernick, the uh, he he he, he really, went the Bills with Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor was a, yeah. had a really good season under uh, Greg Roman with the Bills and doing some really good stuff in the quarterback running game and pistol formations and um, you know stuff that's hard to defend against with a certain kind of type of quarterback. But we haven't seen the drop back in the pocket offense, drop back passing game out of Greg Roman since he's been in the NFL doesn't mean he can't do it. He's kind of been pigeonholed. Was he pigeonholed unfairly? There's some people side-eyeing Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers for the decision to bring Greg Roman in and pair him with Justin Herbert. Even though he's kind of athletic, I wouldn't assume that we're going to see the same kind of offense we saw with Kaepernick, with Lamar Jackson, as we do with Justin Herbert in L.A. And they were together with the Diners, right? Harbaugh and... Yes. Yeah. I yeah. assume so. Roman yeah. was with yeah. Harbaugh the whole time with the 49ers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought the whole so time. So it started right. with Alex Smith, and then they started... Then they leaned heavily Kaepernick, into yeah. Kaepernick and the, and the pistol stuff. And they, if you remember, they went to Lamar midseason in his rookie year. I mean, they were on, on the down and outs. Yeah. Um, so a couple things. As we talked about, like with Raheem Morris just a couple minutes ago, these guys can change their stripes. As you said, it doesn't mean he can't be a good passing game coordinator. He could be. Maybe, maybe. maybe. And maybe they hire a great quarterback coach slash passing game coordinator. I mean, maybe there's another shoe to drop. Yeah. And Roman's the offensive coordinator, but he's also run game coordinator heavy. Yeah, Someone yeah. else is really the quarterback pass game coordinator. They come together for a game plan. Greg calls the plays on Sunday. So I'm trying to get into Harbaugh's mind on this, which is a scary place. But I think just knowing his history, he wants to run the football. I mean, he he had, potentially has a first round quarterback in Michigan. They ran the ball like crazy. Didn't matter if he had Andrew Luck. He's running the football, whether it's a quarterback or not. He wants physicality. He wants running the game. That's how he believes football is won. And I appreciate that to no end. And frankly, has there been a less reliable run game than the Chargers? I mean, even with Austin Eckler and good backs, you could never count on it. You could never get close out games with the run game, control the tempo and flow of the game, you know, get the game under control. But if they're planning on running Herbert, even – Five ten percent more than he does now, which are mostly scrambles. I have a massive problem with that. Not that he's incapable; he's certainly not Kaepernick or Lamar or even Tyrod. 
But you just gave him, I mean, like, if I'm owner, I'm like, we're trying to protect this guy. I just gave him a monster contract. I don't want, I mean, Lamar's running went down after his huge contract. You designed runs, you know, like, we're getting up in age. You're on contract number two. I don't want you to be Cam Newton and run into a wall. And plus, you're not as good at it as Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. I want an expansive, great passing game. Side note, and this is just me putting the tinfoil hat on. Could Harbaugh say, I'm drafting McCarthy at five. I'm trading Herbert for a bunch of picks. And we're running the ball. McCarthy's a really active running quarterback. If I was Chargers ownership and we hired him and had this conversation, I'd be like, I can't hire you if this is what you want to do. But he's an odd bird and he might want his quarterback. I, I can't even fathom that happening. And, and I think Arbaugh, as uh, loyal as he is, probably realizes this is a great job because of the quarterback that's in place. And I think contractually, sure so. it would be nearly I almost didn't bring it up. Yeah. Um, and But yeah, Harbaugh is an odd bird. And you'd never know what direction he's going to go, except for that he is going to want a physical football team. They're mm-hmm. going to be physical and they're going to run the ball. So I, I think he nailed it there. He brought in a guy that he knows is going to put together a great running game. And, and that's going to help Justin Herbert. I mean, if I was Steelers, I'd give him four first round picks for Herbert <laughs> <laughs> and TJ Watt and keys to stadium, you know, whatever you want, you know, like, so I don't think that's even, I almost didn't bring that up, but he's an odd bird and he loves McCarthy. And this is a weird hire. Someone might call and say, Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, are you, uh, you going to go draft Jaden Daniels and you want a whole bunch of picks? And uh, yeah, but very right. unlikely to happen. I think it's about the running game more than anything with Greg Roman. I do too. And, uh, we'll see what the drop back passing game looks like, but they're going to be physical. They're going to run the ball first and they've got a really good quarterback that uh, should be great in whatever drop back passing game mm-hmm. they employ for the Chargers. So I'm, I'm still not buying concerned. Herbert stock. I wanted the Bears to hire Greg Roman if they kept Justin Fields. I thought they should have mm-hmm. hired Greg Roman two years ago instead of Getsy in the first place. That would be an interesting combination. Yeah, although I, I don't think... I don't think the Bears are going to keep Fields, even though a lot of Bears fans think they are. But I don't want to throw out the idea that maybe the Bears drop back only one spot to number two, and the Washington Commanders make it worth the Bears' while to go up to one, and the Bears just stay at two if they do keep. Because people are talking about the Falcons, a lot of teams going all the way up to number one. The Bears might say, man, we can get a future first from the Commanders, and Cliff, Swap obviously, out. Cliff Kingsbury, the new OC, there's a connection there with Caleb Williams. They go up one spot. The Bears do keep fields. Then they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at the second spot and still get a nice little haul from the commanders just to drop one spot. Or they could drop back a couple of times and someone else could still trade up for May or trade up for, you know, Jane Daniels, whoever ends mm-hmm. up being QB2 in this draft. Um, uh, that's certainly interesting I get it, yeah. to me, but I do think it's going to be Williams to the Bears at one, which brings us to the commanders who have the second pick in the draft. And we got this question okay. yesterday, and it's a good question. It's a fair question. Is um should uh, hold on, I want to get the, the right question asker here. It's Jerry, our guy Jerry, the uh the commish for our old uh, fantasy football league here on Peacock and Williamson. By yeah, the way. yeah. Uh, Jerry says Washington likely picking a quarterback high. Kingsbury gets to quote unquote develop another high pick. Anyone else worried about this? Very uh <laughs> So we did, we did, I wish we kind of recorded some of our off the air conversations with Cliff and I'll do my best to kind of reiterate what we talked about, but I can also concede maybe he's a coordinator. Maybe he's not a head coach. You know, I think that goes without saying for all these guys, you know, I've been saying that about Arthur Smith here in Pittsburgh, you know I mean? Like he might be able to coordinate the heck out of a passing game, et cetera. I didn't like his scheme, though, with the Cardinals. It was very static. DeAndre Hopkins always lined up in the same spot. I mean, it was, I don't say it was predictable, but it was very static. And this is what we talked about off the air. We wanted to go back and double-check his quarterbacks. His first year at Texas Tech, he had Baker Mayfield. Now, I understand Baker Mayfield wasn't a five-star recruit at that point, but several years later, he went on to be the first overall pick in the draft. Didn't win with Baker or develop Baker. Then this Mahomes fella he had for two years really didn't win in the Big Ten with Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes. And then he goes to the Cardinals and insists on not having Rosen. We want Kyler, you know, and first overall pick, much like Mayfield, doesn't win with him. Then last year, he has the future first overall pick. That's three first overall picks and the best quarterback of all time if you're keeping score. 
and Williams has his worst year. <laughs> so that's not a ringing endorsement. Three first overall picks in Mahomes, and they all did worse with you than without you? And he never won. He had those quarterbacks in college. Never he never won. In fact, his best season record-wise, and he won the Holiday Bowl in 2013, his first year as head coach with Baker Mayfield, 8-5. and five. But does he get credit for developing Baker Mayfield? That was the first season. Oh. I was so Oklahoma and won the Heisman, right? And they got worse from there. They were four and eight the next year, seven and six. So he had two winning records in what six seasons as head coach in college. And he had the greatest quarterback of all time, Patrick Mahomes, as his college quarterback, and still was finishing sixth, yeah. eighth, seventh in the conference standings. Uh, so that's uh that is not great. And then you, you mentioned the Kyler Murray stuff in the pros, and, and that didn't go well either. So um, and, and right, maybe he's, and that's why he got the head coaching jobs because of the jobs he did before that at Houston. And where was he? A and M after yeah, that right? was yeah. an offensive coordinator. He's a Mike Leach type guy, air raid dude. You yeah. Know, right. all, all air raid stuff. And that's what he did as a player and uh, right. at quarterback. And then that just, it hasn't played in the NFL. And I feel the same way about chip Kelly. Uh, yeah. Chip Kelly might bring you a running game for the Seattle Seahawks. And there's rumors and he's, been, you know, maybe he's their number one candidate. Chip Kelly might be the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. They'll run the ball pretty well, uh, and he has run-heavy schemes. But as far as the passing game, I saw that firsthand, and uh, he had some success earlier on with the with the Eagles, but with the 49ers, they had the worst passing game in the league. And I, I get personnel wasn't great there. It was just like mesh concept all day. It's like, this isn't college, man. You can't just go spread them out and go fast and have crossers all day and pick teams apart in the NFL. You just can't do it. Innovation's great, and I'm all for it. Creativity's great, but most inventions weren't made in history. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to try to invent this. Well, you didn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, not everything works. So I heard this on a different podcast, and I wish I, was, I remembered which one, and I've been meaning to bring it up ever since. And I think it's a really smart and interesting way to look at coordinator hires. So even the Steelers, you know, they, they got a new offensive coordinator. Do you really think Tomlin, Mr. Rooney, Omar Khan, and we can say this about anyone that just hired a coordinator, watched every snap of Arthur Smith's offense and broke it down schematically? You know, no chance. No. And take that times five or six that other coordinators that they that they uh, interviewed. You know, like how many coordinators did Washington interview? How many coordinators did some of these teams, Seattle, interview? Do you think they know that scheme? like the back of their hand, or do they think their buddy said, Arthur Smith, Cliff Kingberry, he's a good dude. He deserves another time. You played against him once. A bunch of people know him. He comes in the building and he's super impressive. Right. It's I don't that think interview. you know the scheme that well. Yeah. You, There's you, not they, enough time. You sat with them and they liked you enough and, and mm -hmm. you sold them and you interviewed well and your packet was great, right? That yep. you brought with you and they enjoyed eating steak with you somewhere after the yeah. initial interview. And, and you have a bunch of buddies or yeah. you were on the you were on the Marshall staff together 20 years ago. And, you know, people are going yeah. to bat for you that you do. Yeah. yeah. And as opposed to. And yes, I mean, again, I'll take it to the Steelers. I'm sure the Steelers went to their pro personnel guy that's in charge of the Falcons and said, tell me everything about the scheme that, you know. OK, here's 10 bullet points. He goes for it too much on fourth down. He's great at that. Blah, 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 blah. So you ask him about those things at the interview. But the coordinator that's getting interviewed knows that's coming and be like, yeah, I didn't use much 11 personnel because we didn't have good receivers. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's just no way that you would know the offense schematically like the back of your hand for five different offenses in a three day window. I mean, if you had all off season to study it, no, but not in the time that you have to hire somebody. Next Kyle Shanahan, Andy Reed, in the Super Bowl, again, are these two coaches. Let's uh, talk more in depth about them and, and their legacies and their careers heading into Super Bowl 58 next. This episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold. 
gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRAs for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. So, Cliff Kingsbury, I can't think of a quarterback that was better with him than either before or after him. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of his quarterbacks after him went to Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and became the greatest quarterback of all time. And that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, You can argue whether they're not a dynasty if they are. I think win one more. You win three. I think that puts you in the dynasty area. Absolutely. I think two. They're probably right there. Uh, but if you start losing more Super Bowls than winning, then it gets a little bit dicey as far as dynasty goes. But I mean, they're they're doing special things, obviously, yeah. under Andy Reid. And he was Super a great quick, coach. just to stop you. The Bills going to four straight and losing them all is not a dynasty. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's not a dynasty. But it's not. Yeah. If they if won they two won of those two, four, I'd say maybe. If they won two, lost two? Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty unbelievable stint. Okay. I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, I mean that'd be qu- three and one, yes. Two and a, yeah. two and two. Yeah. I mean, so I feel there's like, a big deal. Yeah, I feel like you know the like if they win again, it's different. It's really different. I, I feel the like it, it is a big deal, and it's obviously yeah. a huge deal for Kyle Shanahan. Uh, yeah. I want to go to a YouTube comment though, and we had a little conversation earlier on uh, about Hall of Famers that are on these rosters, and we talked about the head coaches, and I said something to the effect that if Kyle Shanahan gets his ring, that he's probably locked into a Hall of Fame. And I was talking about his Shanahan tree and because of how many offenses around the NFL are now employing someone that's rubbed elbows with him and, and coached with him. Uh, and and, and the, the, the Shanahan tree is spread throughout the league. Brian Johnson arm wrestling is the handle on, uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know if he's a professional arm wrestler or not, but shout out. Uh, he says, Reed probably has the most successful coaching tree in a very long time. So he's pushing back on my comments about Shanahan saying, and you might want to cool it thinking Shanahan would already be locked in with one Super Bowl win. He has a record of 72 and 54, which is 57%. One Super Bowl ain't going to do it. Um, then so it says some other stuff that is uh, not going to be repeated. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. And first of all, I think it's I, Andy Reid is a great coach. And we said he, he's retired oh, tomorrow, yeah. Hall of Fame lock. I think it's asinine to say that Reid's. Coaching tree is more successful than Shanahan's. Half the stinking league is running the Shanahan offense right now. With all respect to Reed, I don't see a lot of branches off his tree, to be honest with you. I mean, what am I missing here? Nagy um, failed in Chicago. He's back with Reed. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a one-year offensive coordinator stint for Bienemy, who's already back with Reed and helping him out this week now. And right, right, right. Half again. Uh, I, I, and maybe I'm – Am I, I can't think of a single – Head coach in the NFL that that I would consider an Andy Reid branch, direct disciple, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not to say he's not a great coach. No, not at all. Really the, Andy Reid is part of the the Bill Walsh tree. It's funny because this is a they're all from the Bill Walsh tree. I mean, right. in some way, you know. And frankly, I think Mike Shanahan, especially if we do put a lot of weight in trees has a really strong case for the Hall of Fame and never gets mentioned that way. I think Mike is getting a little bit in that regard. Now I have mixed feelings of, do I give coaches a lot of credit for great trees or not? You know, we just talked about Reed. It's fine. It's okay. Belichick's is horrible. I mean, I mean, it's flat out horrible. Tomlin doesn't have one at all. <laughs> you know I mean? Like right. nobody s- steals from the Steelers staff. Nobody wants his coordinators, you know, like, I don't know that that detracts from any of their Hall of Fame or legacy that they don't have great trees, but I kind of look at it from the other way. If you do, it's a good thing to put in the positive column. And, and you think about why, like what what's the legacy is part of it. Like Andy Reid's legacy is that he was a great coach and he's won multiple Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be any more than that. For Kyle yeah. Shanahan, 
when everyone wants to do what you're doing, you're changing the face of the, of the sport. So it goes beyond record, right? And that's what Bill Walsh did 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and obviously, and Mike did a lot of that. Daddy Mike did a and lot Mike of that. came from that tree. And so there's relations the there. The Kubiak but, stuff huh. is Mike, I mean, you know. But then you go back and you look at, okay, well, Bill Walsh's tree had Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan came from Mike Shanahan and McVay and uh, LaFleur and all these guys coached under Mike Shanahan under offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan in Washington. I think what made all these coaches great is, and it's, it's you got to go listen to the, the Play Callers podcast mm-hmm. that The Athletic did, and they talk about all of this. It's the true iron sharpening iron of it all. It's how do you get to where your offense is, is the important thing. It's not, oh, here's the playbook. I'm going to open it up and we're going to run this play. No, it's why are you running this play? How did you get there? How are you going against the defenses that you're Mm -hmm. competing against? And Kyle Shanahan's offense right now is different than his offense was the last time he played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl four years ago because it has to change. And I think that's that's the important part of what makes a great coach. And I think it was the process of these coaches and how they go about developing their scheme, how they go about putting together game plans is the important part about what's made the Shanahan tree coaches good. It's not what the X's and O's actually say in the playbook and how you open it up and just call the play. Cause it's a great play. And the, you know, the, 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 the lines are drawn in the right spot on paper. Mm-hmm. It's how did you get there? What are you doing as an offense to win against defenses? That's the key. That's why his offense is spreading. Yes. And last thing I know, we need to wrap this things up. I don't know that a win guarantees Shanahan a Hall of Fame, but he's now in that heavily in that conversation. You know, I, I don't know that that's a lock, his but he's dad, got a lot more say, ahead of him. His dad will say that des- definitely doesn't guarantee you a Hall that's of Fame. Enough, buddy boy. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Last thing I want to say, too, is, you know, McVay's offense has changed dramatically and Reed's offense has changed unbelievably dramatically. I mean, post Tyree kill. And I mean, even the Brady offenses, I mean, they were innovative with their Gronk Hernandez stuff. People weren't using Welker Edelman types like they were. They changed dramatically too. I mean, you can't just run the same stuff over and over and over. No, it, it has to change. The league is about mm-hmm. changing. The best coaches are the ones that, that alter their scheme. I mean, weekly, but you know, it, it's mm-hmm. how did you get there? It's the process. It's how do you practice? How do you install things? It's so much more than just what's the scheme you're bringing in. Yeah. Uh, what's the one trick that worked uh, in 2010 at the University of Houston? It's not going to play in 2024 in the NFL, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. So, um, and that worries me about Kingsbury and Kelly. Back to yeah. you know conversation 15 minutes ago, or whatever. Yeah, and and if you're looking for a coach, find a coach that the 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 quarterbacks played better under them. Than they ever did before, rather not than the other low points. Yeah, right. That's probably what I'd be looking for. So it's not that you know, and you think that goes without saying. Very higher, but um, you know, prove us wrong is kind of where it'd be like with, with with Washington. I think Washington fans are a little bit worried about that as well. I understand. Yeah, a lot of change in that room in that building. Hey, but you know what? Move up to number one, Washington. See if you can get it done. I kind of like that. Hmm. I could see it. I, I wouldn't mind it from the Bears' perspective either, because you'd get a nice chunk. Then Maybe get, even go with Daniels and Fields. Don't even trade them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Super <laughs> okay. Bowl preview tomorrow, though. Yeah. Super Bowl preview. Uh, yep. We'll make our official predictions on what will happen and our favorite prop bets as well for Super Bowl 58. And then it will be draft season for all 32 teams in the NFL. And that'll be the direction we're going. Matt's going to be at the Combine. That's going to be a whole oh, lot yeah. of fun this offseason. And we'll be with you every day. Shout out to all the everydayers. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Matt and I back tomorrow. Peacock and Williamson.